Uh, a human has got culture, a human appreciates art, there's a degree of reasoning, the ability to write, that's, that's being human for me. When I look at the future of the human race, I think that working on our cognitive evolution, specifically expanding it and evolving ourselves, is the single highest value thing we could do as a species. Simon, where are we tech-wise when it comes to the, to the brain? There's an artist some of us well have heard about from London who has a, an implant into his skull so that he can hear colours. So, so there, are, there is activity going on. It, it, it's intriguing to think where things will go because we're aware of, of neural implants that are um, helping robotic limbs work. For those who, who, who are quadriplegic or paraplegic, there are, we've got a good start at the moment. Yeah, if we look at the, the current state of neuroscience and look at the tools we have to work with, including the MRI to image our brain, or brain uh, stimulation, deep brain stimulation to try to adjust disease or dysfunction, or EEG to help us meditate or for sleep, the basic toolkits we have to interface with our brains are not sufficiently powerful for us to really extend our cognition. Do you worry that we're going to divide the world further for the haves and the have-nots? I think these tools will be democratized, much like we've seen smartphones. I think it'll, be, it'll follow a natural curve. But I think the, the bigger question on this is, is working on this a luxury or is it a necessity? What we're talking about here, Laurie, is we're talking about directed evolution, aren't we? We've got the evolution that's happened to us all over the millennium, and now we're talking about being able to control and direct things. If we've augmented ourselves to the degree where we are super effective and optimized for space travel, and we're able to uh, amend and modify ourselves so that we're optimized for the, for the ocean, is that a human being? That's, that's one of the questions we should probably touch on. I don't know about you guys, but I spend my life trying to improve myself and trying to fix the things that I'm not good at. And so I don't, I don't know why we don't have the opposite ambition is why can't we be more? And so what are we so scared about losing? What is it? What's at risk? Why is this particular mission personal to you? My father was addicted to drugs for the first 25 years of my life. My stepfather has early symptoms of Alzheimer's. I had chronic depression for, 20, for 10 years, from 24 to 34, where the only thing I wanted in existence was to die. And so I know what happens when the brain fails inside and also with other people. I also know from my personal experience in life that falling in love is one of the most beautiful things in existence. And helping someone in need is wonderful and receiving help that the satisfaction I derive from life is my interaction with other people, my ability to learn and grow as a human. I want more of what intuitively makes me happy and all of us happy.